wireless talk can give the enemy valuable details of information. Details, fragments, odd bits and pieces which he can string together into a complete pattern of our plans. You may think you can trust the person you're talking to, a close relation, a lifelong friend, but you never know whether he or she will pass it on. You never know until it's too late. And just as you have trusted them, they may trust someone else. One by one, they pass it on. Before you realize what's happened, your scrap of information has become common gossip. Next, please. Sooner or later, your news will reach an enemy agent. And who's to blame? All the loose-mouthed, careless fools who talked. And more particularly, you. Don't think that careless talk only comes from the fellow who can't hold his drink and his tongue at the same time. It comes from all sorts of people in all sorts of places. Reggie's well, taking you to the dance for the town hall Saturday week. <laughs> That's what he thinks. You know, I hear quite a lot when I'm driving the Major about. Only yesterday I heard him tell Captain Brown that we'll be moving before then. Overseas at that. Wasn't the raid terrific last night? I never heard such a noise. And did you hear the new bomb? The kind that crackles instead of banging? That's Hitler's new weapon. Of course, it's terribly secret. But my husband's in the Home Guard. So naturally, he knows all about it. Home Guard? Well, you can tell him from the Army that that bomb's our new egg, egg gun. It don't fire a normal shell at all. It fires a... Well, it's a... Uh, it's got a casing, and, um, it's a... Uh... It's a lovely sight, it's you, but it's wonderful. Heard from your Annie lately. No, that's no. Only in here, bro. Three months ago. My old man's had his leave cancelled again. How do you want, Joe? Oh, two pound a tape it'll do this morning. They seem to be terribly overworked at the depot. Of course they are, Doc. Surely you know why. Mrs. Smith's boy is a dick cop, too. And he says they're refitting the 20th Army for overseas. Here's your lovely chubby. Oh, so that's what it is, is it? My husband always says if only he had a chance of talking to General Alexander. Sometimes you yourself are so familiar with the information that you imagine there's nothing secret about it at all. Yes, but in experience, these all wave sets are always defective on one wavelength. Nonsense. Now, take another nitrogen set. It works OK. It's got long wave, short wave, and intercom. In fact, there's a coil... Everyday knowledge to him, but it may be news to the enemy. And take another case. The times when you don't realize that your information has any real military value at all. Well, as it happens, I can let you have a photograph. The Colonel's just made us all go and have new ones taken. Passport size. Of course, he's crazy. We've all got perfectly good ones in our 2606s already. But then he's it doesn't seem very important, does it? But the enemy may know, even if you don't, that these new photographs mean that your unit is going overseas shortly. These rules all apply while you're still at home, but they apply even more when you go overseas. When you're overseas, careless talk becomes even more dangerous. The nearer you are to the enemy, the quicker the information can reach him, and the better use he can make of it. And foreign service, wherever it may be, brings two new points to watch. First, don't trust too much to the friendliness of the native population even though they welcome you with open arms. Do you remember the cordial welcome our troops received when they entered Benghazi? Now see how the same people welcomed the Hun a few months later, ready apparently to cheer all comers. The second point is even more important. Don't imagine that foreigners can't understand English just because they show no signs of doing so. Overseas, too, there is always a tendency to relax when you're behind the lines, a feeling that you're miles away from the enemy and that no one who matters can hear what you say. 
Don't you believe it? It's still careless talk, and it's still dangerous. You know, we should have been in a hell of a mess if the Navy hadn't come along. You weren't holding the place very strongly, were you? Strongly? We only had a company and a half. You know, that sector always has been very lightly held. Lord knows what will happen if the Hun attacks again. Still, maybe he thinks we're stronger than we are. There's another time when you're liable to relax, and that is when you are wounded. But once again, remember, foreigners may understand English, even though they don't appear to. Nazdar, Jackson Mate. And the same to you, miss. Then to see Bunny Checks again. Oh, thank you, miss. Oliver English. Bohigel, ne rozumim ani slovo. Right. She knows what you mean, corpse. She can see it in your eye. That's why she's leaving you. God, she reminds me of my dear old granny. All the same, I bet some of the boys up the line could do with a few extra fags like this. And a bit of homework like that. <laughs> Can't you just hear the old man? The tent Cheshires don't smoke in the line. And all they don't have women, neither. Poor beggars. You know, they're not due to be relieved for a fortnight. How do you know? Well, the Seventh Loamshires are taking over from them. And they're to stay in rest, but it's still Friday week. Cut it out, you two! That's careless talk! That's all right, you don't speak English, Sergeant. Think I'd still be lying here if she did. Hey, outside, you. So in your own interest, always guard your tongue. Don't let vanity show off your knowledge. Don't let drink oil your tongue. Don't trust anyone, not even your best friend. Don't imagine that foreigners can't understand. Don't relax behind the lines. And never take friendliness for granted. Tiny fragments of news may not seem vital in themselves, but added together, they can build up into a mass of information and tell the enemy exactly what he wants to know. There's only one safe way to keep a secret. Wherever you are, keep your mouth shut.